Hi, I'm Dr. Ryu, and today we're going to be doing a breast lift reduction and augmentation combination on this patient who's 30 years old and has lost a significant amount of weight. Her starting weight was 240, and she's now 152, so nearly a 90 pound uh, reduction in weight. Um, her breasts were quite large and pendulous when she was 240 pounds, and uh, as a result of her weight loss, she has developed significant droop. Um, in addition, she's lost the volume in the upper pole of her breast. And uh, most of the breast tissue, as you can see, is below her breast fold. So today we're going to do a combination of breast lift using an anchor shape uh, incision. This will provide the coverage for our new breast. We're also going to reduce most of her lower pole and keep the nipple attached to a uh, central, uh, to a medial pedicle, as you can see here, similar to what Paul Finlay has described. And the third component will be to do a dual plane augmentation, which means that the implant will provide upper pole fullness, and the coverage for that is going to be pectoralis major muscle for the upper two thirds, and the dermis uh, that, that's been deepithelialized from the lower pole, similar to what we do on mastectomy reconstruction. So we'll have a, a total uh, prosthesis coverage reduction in the breast. The nipple will be moved up to 21 centimeter position from the sternal notch, and then the skin will be closed as it is in the usual way for the wise pattern. Thank you very much. All right, so this is the patient we showed earlier. We've marked her out carefully preoperatively, which includes the uh, skin pattern resection. We're going to reinforce it because with the prep, they've gotten a little bit lighter. Part of the problem on these massive weight loss patients is the tissues have been stretched out severely and all the remaining breast is pretty much way lower than it should be below the fold. So when you try to do an augmentation on these patients, it tends to stretch out over time and the results aren't as good. If you look at it, at the results critically at one and two years. So I borrowed from our reconstructive uh, experience and have decided to use this lower skin pretty much uh, as we would alloderm. Um, we could use alloderm, however, it is quite expensive and this is a cosmetic case. The insurance is not covering it. So it would add probably three to four thousand additional to the expense of the surgery. So instead we're going to use the uh, dermis that would normally be discarded in this surgery uh, as an alloderm to complete our total coverage of our prosthesis like we would on a breast cancer reconstruction. And if you look at our videos on that, uh, we might need a little more anesthesia there. Um, if you look at the video on the reconstruction, you can see that it's submuscular on the upper two thirds. And, uh, and pretty much uh, alloderm for the lower third. So in this case, what we'll do is we'll keep this as a patch of alloderm and complete the uh, coverage, uh, hook it up to the pectoralis major, and we'll preserve the nipple on a medial pedicle uh, and remove pretty much everything below that as would be done on a whole Finley. Um, I've had trouble in the past uh, with vertical reduction in this kind of case uh, with skin redundancy, especially when you're this aggressive in removal of skin. Um, so what we've done is combine uh, three separate operations using the inverted T mastopexy type technique uh, followed by the hall finlay type medial pedicle and then a dual plane uh, submuscular augmentation with the lower pole being controlled by the dermis uh, from the, the patient's own skin rather than from a cadaveric graft. Um, part of the problem also other than having a lot of loose skin is in these patients uh, over time the implant tends to bottom out pretty significantly so our goal here is to control the lower pocket and prevent uh, in the future significant downward migration of the uh, implant. So we've noticed on most of the mastectomy reconstruction we've been doing on the alloderm that there's really good control postoperatively at the lower pole. In fact, even on patients like this that are very droopy, she was getting a mastectomy, um, using the alloderm we could get a reconstruction that's very, very perky. Uh, with very little bottoming out over time, so we're going to use a similar type situation here.
but instead of using an allodarm graft, we're going to use her own dermis for the lower pole. So the first part here is to reduce the areola. Just like on a regular breast reduction uh, patient, the areola is significantly distended. In her case, it was 65 millimeters, and we're going to drop it back down to 42 millimeters. Come on this side there. So we'll, we have this 42 millimeter sizer we're going to use to maintain a perfect circle for the remaining areola. Everything else around it within this triangle and below the new horizontal lines will be the epithelized and removed. So this areola is now 42 millimeters. We're now going to incise our marks. It's very important to get very precise measurements with these marks. Um, what we've done is basically outline the pocket for our submuscular implant. They're very close to the center. You don't want them to touch, otherwise um, you'll have synastia. Then we've um, outlined the breast meridian, which is pretty much the center of the breast, the midline from the sternal notch from the lycus. The new nipple position, which was measured at 21 centimeters from the sternal notch and then a 7 to 8 centimeters triangle with extension medial and laterally to join her current memory pole. So these lines are, are made very carefully in a sitting position preoperatively. And th as you can see, the amount of skin that we're going to remove is quite significant. I would say it's two-thirds of her breast. And y you need to be fairly aggressive because over time it stretches out again and you end up having recurrent ptosis if you don't remove a significant amount to begin with. So it's important to take the proper amount of skin off to begin with. The other thing is um, what I've noticed in the past on these tonic breasts, if you just do a dual plane, basically you're going to end up with uh, a bottoming out effect if you're not careful about preserving the inframemory fold. So what you have to do is basically be very careful in not detaching the inframemory fold at the lower pole. So we're going to keep that tightly controlled. So we're still scoring. I'm leaving a little bridge of dermis so that when we close we have sufficient um, tissue to close up. The patient is under sedation with local. We put in some local in it and there will be a little bit of movement during the case. It's a good technique. There's less nausea post-op. And a little bit of motion is probably good in trying to decrease the incidence of DVT and polarimbalist. We do most of our breast surgery like under this anesthesia. The next thing will be to size the uh, triangle along the wise pattern. Again, being very precise with your markings and the incision. Let's get the scoring over here now. So everything from this fold up to the uh, V from the wise pattern will be deactualized and used as a sling to control the low pole of the breast implant. Like so. Just like you don't want the uh, two breast augmentation pockets to communicate, you also don't want these uh, medial incisions to communicate either. Uh, even in, in massive reduction cases, because if they do communicate these two, you end up with webbing effects similar to what you see in burn patients. So you want to absolutely avoid having these two incisions connect, even if there's redundant skin there.
drown myself. Alright, I found fair. Take the lower pole skin as well as all the skin within this pattern. And um, that will allow us to bury this pedicle, the bridge of tissue connecting the nipple to the blood supply. There's various ways to remove this epidermis. You can either use a knife or the way we do it with the scissors, either way works well. The advantage of doing it this way is you don't have anybody, don't need anybody else to put tension on it. It's pretty easy to remove it even when the breast is floppy. So this right here is the excess areola that we're removing. We're shrinking it by at least a third. dilated. So this is right on our mark from our initial incision using the 42 millimeter sizer. The green line just represents the uh, outline for our, our medial pedicle. It's going to pretty much run above this line around the areola and then including the upper inner quadrant of the breast. Everything below the green line is going to be removed except for the flap of skin that we're going to preserve for our lower pole control. And I, I probably won't end up using the whole thing, but we're going to de utilize the whole thing right now just so we have all that we need and discard the rest because usually it's hard to tell exactly how much you're going to use depending on how long the pectoralis major is. On the mastectomy reconstruction, we tend to use the 16 by 6 or the 16 by 8 sonometer if they're very broad. A patient like this, who's very broad, her, her base diameter is uh, 15 and a half, would probably use an allodrum that's uh, 16 by 8 sonometers. So, um, by the same token, we'll preserve this de epithelized dermis, uh, similar to our patch of alloderm to control the lower pole. This was a uh, breast reduction. We just removed the epidermis on the central pedicle, which is this middle part right here. But since uh, we're doing a medial pedicle, all this is going to go other than the uh, skin flap. As you can see, it's quite a bit of skin that we've uh, de epithelialized, but we'll probably end up using just the lower 8 by 16 centimeter. I've already outlined what 16 centimeters is, and we might trim some more off, but that's about where we want to be as far as the uh, coverage of the prosthesis. So, as far as uh, medial pedicle for a nipple, we're going to carry it as we would on a standard medial pedicle reduction. Um, keeping the attachments to the upper inner quadrant of the breast. So the first part of it is going to be to score our wise pattern right below where we can make the mark. I mean the little bridge of dermis so that we don't burn is going to be remaining. And we're going to obviously be careful with our elevation at the 
medial end. Minimize that compared to the lateral will be pretty aggressive. So just going through the rest. This white stuff is dermis. And then the yellow stuff is fat. This cautery pretty much burns the vessels as they go on, so there's minimal bleeding. The vessel right there. The vessel right there. Over here. So we'll continue the scoring. Right along our pattern. And then the lateral part of the inverted T. Right about there. I've left a couple of pieces of skin here which I'm going to remove. I missed during the uh, visualization. You want to make sure that every last little bit of epidermis has been removed because this stuff will be buried. And if you don't remove the outer layer of the skin, this skin right here won't know not to continue growing. It will continue forming skin cells and then form cysts on the inside. So it's really important to be thorough in removal of your epidermis so that all that's left over is this shiny white dermis. So, so the next step will be to elevate these flaps superiorly. You come above, Chris. Over here. And what we'll do is basically deglobe the upper part of the breast, being careful not to detach our medial flap here. So we're just going to elevate just enough to move the skin, but not detach any of the breast off of the muscle over here immediately. So essentially what we're doing is detaching the skin that we are preserving to resurface the final result off of the breast. Since it's going to have to go all the way back down to where these are not And we're right pretty much like a mastectomy flap right at the junction, as you can see here between the subcutaneous fat and the, and the parenchyma. So I'm making it a little bit thinner than I would on a normal lift, only because I don't want to detach any of the blood supply to the nipple from the medial flap, particularly on this inner part here, because that's where all the blood supply is going to come from. So you want to be really careful not to detach any of the parenchyma gland from the under surface where the perforators of the muscle will be bringing blood supply to the nipple. That's pretty close to all I'm going to do on this medial flank here, just enough so that it can come back to the bottom, but not detaching any of the blood flow coming to the nipple. On the lateral part, I can be a little bit more thorough in my elevation of this flap because that part's not going to be responsible for the blood supply to the nipple. So we're going to go a little bit further up north so that we have plenty of mobilization of this skin and we can rotate it back to cover up all this space that's not going to be buried. The flap's going to be a tiny bit thicker as well since it is going to be longer. We want to make sure that the blood supply within the flap is abundant. So we're going to make it just a little bit thicker than what we would do on an mastectomy. So it's a little bit deeper than the subcutaneous fat that's in the junction. You can see um, when Chris lifts the skin up how we're done at the skin is it's, it's really almost um, three times the amount of skin that she really needs. It's all stretched out. She was 240 pounds um, at her maximum weight before she started losing. And she had a 42 triple D breast. She's down to uh, a 38 D and she's actually happy with the volume. Uh, so that's going to be our target weight, uh, target size. It's going to be 38 D. 
Uh, so in order to be able to put an implant in, we've obviously got to remove <coughs> the extra gland that is um, at the bottom of the breast. So the effect will be a net zero gain in breast volume. We're going to remove breast tissue and then we're going to add implant. The whole idea is repositioning uh, the proper position of the breast to the upper pole because right now it's all at the bottom end. So it's really important to do that. So what we'll do is we'll clamp these little blood vessels as we come across. And uh, lift that up a little bit right there. So the smaller vessels we uh, cauterize directly, but these slightly bigger ones we kind of off and cauterize. So, great. So we're going to continue our flat elevation so that the nipple can come out at the, the upper part of this triangle right here. Again, immediately I'm a little bit more superficial just so that we can uh, assure that that pedicle to the nipple stays thick enough. And then laterally, a little bit further. It's that part that's not going to really contribute to the nipple. Blood's a clock. start seeing now that the breast is separating from its surrounding skin. And that's pretty much what we're trying to get here so that we can start removing the breast gland prior to So this white tissue right here is breast tissue and I'm keeping the flap on the lateral part quite a bit thicker because it's going to be longer and I want the blood supply to be sufficient to be able to have this flap survive. The part that's going to be furthest away from this blood supply is this corner right here which will end up being right at the bottom in the center. And that's the part, if it's going to run into the trouble with blood supply, that's the part that does. And that's why we make it just a little bit thicker on this lateral flap right here. So we're pretty much done with that flap elevation. So what we have is total mobilization of our skin envelope. And now we can start thinking about how we're going to keep this breast attached, this nipple attached. So the medial pedicle involves keeping about an 8 centimeter wide bridge of tissue, um, which encompasses basically the upper inner quadrant. Rest. So we're going to go ahead and score that right where our mark is. And then what we'll do is essentially remove everything below that point. So we're going to continue right along this way right here. And elevate this lower flap. Right about here, so all we need is for us to go and store that. This 8 by 16 centimeters takes a gun stretch. This simply is going to be uh, pretty much left intact, just like a piece of alabama. Or even cut, 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 cut. So we basically elevated this upper flat. 
both medial and lateral. The lateral goes all the way up to the top part of the breast, the axillary tail dispense. And you can see, if I flip this over, you've got the breast gland exposed. And what we'd like to do is keep the attachment to this nipple as part of the medial pedicle here. And this is pretty much what's going to keep it alive, all the attachment from here to the inner part of the chest down. The second component to it, one that we usually don't have on a standard reduction, is this lower bridge of dermis. And I've scored through it. It's about the size of the allogram that we normally use for a mastectomy. So what we're going to do now is elevate that as well down to the inframary and primary fold without distorting the fold at all. So we'll be holding this up like so and keeping that bridge of tissue attached. So once we have that elevated as a flap, we're going to remove all the breast tissue that is below our medial pedicle. That crescent shape of breast that Dr. Hall Finley describes on her uh, medial pedicle reduction. So we've already elevated the upper skin flaps, the breast skin essentially that's going to be used to resurface our breasts once we have it reduced and then place an implant in. And now what we're doing is elevating this lower dermal flap, which is going to act as our lower pole stabilizer for the implant as we do a dual plane augmentation. So the first step is to reduce the size of the areola, which is what we did with a 42 millimeter sizing. The next step is to score all of our incisions, which we've marked carefully, preoperatively, in a sitting position. The next step after that is to elevate flaps superiorly so that we can essentially de-glove the breast and have that skin prepared to resurface the breast once we've altered it. Next, we elevate this dermal flap at the lower end so that we have lower pole internal control of the prosthesis coverage along with the pectoralis major at the upper pole. I'm approaching the lower end of this flap right now and I'm, I'm looking carefully back and forth to where my fold is so that we don't distort the internal fold. Because that's the whole idea. You want to preserve for existing fold. It has not shifted all that much <coughs> during um, her expansion of her breast when she was 240 pounds. It stayed at the same point. What happened is the breast got enormous. The, the skin was stretched out. And when she lost the, all of her weight, the remaining breasts now hung below this fold. So the actual fold is in the correct position. So we're going to preserve that very carefully. And we're pretty much down the chest wall now, right at the level of the internal fold. So that is our lower dermal skin flap. So what we'll do now is do our breast reduction as we would normally using the uh, medial pedicle. So it looks like a crescent or a croissant because it tapers off at the medial end of the lower breast. The bulk of the resection is down and out, laterally and inferiorly, and then it tapers off again at the upper pole. So I'm going to start the uh, one end of the crescent right here. Right down the Fashion. And we're going to continue going straight down from the point where we've marked out our medial pedicle. The advantage here is you can be pretty aggressive with your gland resection. And the majority of what's resected is what we would like to remove, the, the pendulous part of the breast that's hanging down at the lower end and lateral. So I'm going straight down to ensure that the blood supply to the nipple is preserved. And right down the pec fascia, you can see that what's coming off right now is the tapered end of the crescent. And now we're getting towards the bigger part. If you think of a crescent shape or section, that's pretty much what we have here. I'm going to round this 
doors off here beyond our next areola complex so you can see pretty much what we're preserving right here. I'm going to go right around that and go a little bit deeper and more aggressively respecting the lateral of the front of the breast there. So ideally, I'd like to remove nearly as much as what I'm adding with the implant so that in the end, it's pretty close to the same line, maybe slightly more. She wanted to go uh, double D, but uh, I've encouraged her to go a little bit less because the bigger the implant, the more likely that she will deteriorate over time. So it was up to me. Most patients that are getting this surgery with BSD instead of a D or double D because I want to minimize the amount of weight that there is against these flaps. But in her case, she wanted to go a little bit bigger. So we've chosen an implant that's in the 500 range. So I'd like to remove somewhere between 3 and 400 grams of breast to compensate for that. So here's the crescent. You can see we started right and the lower inner part of the breast and now we're rounding off the distal end of our pedicle keeping the attachments carefully to it and then I'm heading towards the upper end of the breast right here tapering it off at that corner so that's why it was important elevating all this upper flap <coughs> there will be the other end of our crescent. So let's go ahead and put an alice right at the end of this flap right here. You can see the nipples still have a very good blood supply. This is the reduction part of it right here. And you can see that the nipple is attached with a medial pedicle. So this will be quite a significant reduction here and that's almost all the stuff that's hanging down proactively the part of the breast that's undesirable. So we're going to keep that very carefully attached. I'm pretty much down beyond the breast and radium now. I'm all lateral to it. So I'm going to be very aggressive over here in resecting the breast since we're not getting much blood supply from the, from the lateral part. And we want to be pretty aggressive with the amount of blood we remove, otherwise in the end she'll be too big. So we're getting to the upper part of our section and I'm going to start tapering it off. Basically I want to make sure that all of the upper inner quadrant is still attached. That's why it's called a medial pedicle. You can go a little bit more narrow, but since we are combining this with augmentation, I'm being a little bit extra cautious to make sure the base of this pedicle is quite wide to maximize the amount of blood supply to this, this pedicle. So I'm I'm pretty much stopping right at the breast meridian as far as my first section. Here it is right there, the center of the breast, and here it is at the undersurface where we've elevated our flat. So that's going to be the end of our section right there. I'm going down to the fascia. I'd like to do a submuscular augmentation for the upper part, so I'm going to go down to the lateral border of the major. And that'll be the uh, third component of our surgery. The first being the lift component where we tighten the skin. The second being the reduction, which is what we're doing now. And the third being our implant and reconstruction, similar to what we would do on a mastectomy reconstruction using the muscle for the upper two thirds and the dermal flap for the lower third. So I'm beyond my. Uh, I'm beyond my medial pedicle now, so I'm going straight down. You want to preserve 
some of this lateral attachment to the medial flap, to the lateral flap, so there's no blood supply, blood supply compromise. Because this flap right here is getting blood supply from some of the lateral filters. So here's what we have. It's a pretty significant resection. And it's pretty much the lower part and the lateral part of the breast. The nipple looks very viable, it's nice and tank, so you can tell that it's going to survive nicely. And what we've removed is everything that's hanging down laterally and centrally. So you can see that's going to work out beautifully right there. This flap's going to end up being down here. So the next step is to irrigate, make sure we don't have any bleeding. And then what we'll do is the third part of our procedure, which is the submuscular dual plane. So this stuff has antibiotics in it. We put uh, ANSEF, bacitracin, and gentamicin. We make sure that all the areas of the sections are cleaned very thoroughly. That's the first part of it right there. Second part will be to make sure that we have all of the bleeders controlled. So we're going to look in all directions. Our flaps here. This is a little bit less elevated than I would on a standard lift, only because I want to minimize the detachment of our medial pedicle. So we'll look under our flaps over here as well. And you can see there's a few spotty bleeders here and there. So we'll make sure that's totally dry before we uh, start with the augmentation. So the next step is to identify the lateral border of our muscle. And this is it right here. This is the pectoralis major. And we're going to go submuscular. You can go subglandular but then you'll knock off more of the perforators coming off from the muscle. So we'll do it the standard way that we do it on an augmentation, lifting up this muscle right here. And you can see it's a pretty significant muscle, but it ends far short of where you want the lower pole of the breast to be. So that's why we preserve that flap of dermis on the other end, on the bottom end of the other side. We'll hook it up to this edge right here. Another red part over here is the serratus anterior. So we're going to go right along the spec major border. It's pretty easy to identify. And you can see the serratus ends there. That's the red right there. So we're going to detach the pec major off of its chest wall insertion. This muscle starts out in the humerus of the arm and then goes straight across to the clavicle, and that's called the clavicular head. And then it starts on the sternum as a sternal head. And then has a few wispy attachments to this lower end of the chest wall right here. And that's the part that needs to be detached when we do a, a, a standard augmentation. So we're going to dissect this out and then use the lower part of our dermal flap just like we would on a mastectomy to complete the coverage. So now we've got three different layers. We've got our skin flaps, which are going to be used to resurface the breast at the end. We've got the breast parenchyma, half of which has been removed, the nipple being attached to a medial pedicle. And now this third layer is between the muscle that you see right here the pec major, and the chest wall. So we're just simply disconnecting that so that the implant can sit in a retromuscular position. So we have a very nice demonstration of this serratus right here and the pectoralis major. So we're going to move on to fiber optic now. So if you could, Stacy, just turn that off for a second. Hook me up. Below. So now we're below the muscle. We're continuing our dissection from the lateral part towards the center. And it's a pretty bloodless plane if you stay between the pec major, which is on the roof here, and the pec major, which is underneath. Here's the pec minor here, and the serratus. 
So you can see there's very little blood supply here. It's really just wispy tissue that we can bluntly separate and that will create a perfect pocket for our implant. As I said, you can either go behind or in front of the muscle. There are several advantages to going behind the muscle. In this case, the most important advantage is that the blood supply for the nipple is more carefully preserved since the muscle and the breast will be attached together and all the perforators coming through the muscle will be intact going to the nipple. So that's a very important component. But in general, if you're not doing this more extensive kind of uh, technique, uh, even on a regular augmentation, the main advantage of going behind the muscle is uh, lesser chance of getting capsular contracture or hardening of the breast. Um, it, it also, I think, in the end provides a better shape. And um, for cancer detection, uh, it has the least amount of uh, decrease as, as far as mammography. The best for cancer detection is obviously not having any implants, but if you're going to have implants, uh, saline behind the muscle is the least intrusive and gel over the muscle the most, according to most studies. The disadvantage going behind the muscle is it hurts more. And um, they can get a little bit of step formation of their chest when they contract. So you can get a little bit of motion of the breast if you do an aggressive exercise of your pec muscle. But other than that, the advantages far outweigh those disadvantages. So I'm continuing with my pocket here. It's pretty much all the way up to where I've marked my external markings for the pocket, right about there. I'm going to look to see again where I need to be, and that's pretty close to where I want to be. So the implant's going to sit way nice and high right there, where she had no breast before, like so. And the lower part of the coverage will be that little dermis bridge that we made. So this is pretty much our pocket. I'm just bluntly dissecting it right to my line right there. You can see my finger is right at the line in all directions. And I want to be very careful not to detach laterally too much because then we'll have the implant migrate to the side. And it's definitely not what you want on this kind of case. So I'm going to be very, very careful. So that's pretty much the muscle dissection. So you can turn it on for a second. So what we have so far is elevated skin flaps as we would normally on a breast lift, and that's going to provide the new surface for our skin. We've reduced our breast using a medial pedicle, similar to what Dr. Holt Finley has described. It's a crescent shaped resection, which involves mainly the lower pole and the lateral part of the breast. And you can see the nipples get excellent blood supply. It's got a good perfusion when you press down, the blood supply comes right back, even though the pedicle is pretty narrow. It's completely attached to the upper inner quarter. The next thing we've done, as we would on a mastectomy reconstruction, is we've elevated our muscle. And you can see pretty much that this is the undersurface of our pectoralis major. And it's been detached to the lower pole, as we would normally on a dual planar section. The only difference here is it's basically left attached to our uh, breast tissue. Uh, underneath it, you can see this muscle right here, which is the pectoralis minor, and then this muscle right here, which is the serratus anterior. So the pedicle is attached to the upper inner quadrant. The muscle has been elevated right up to where our external marks are. You can see right to that line all around, so it'll have a nice place for our uh, submuscular prosthesis. So the next step. If this was a mastectomy, basically we'd be missing this chunk of tissue right here. All we'd have was mastectomy flap and the muscle. And at this point, if you look at our video from the mastectomy reconstruction, we'd be laying a piece of cadaver skin, an alloderm, 8 by 16 somber. So instead of what we've done, rather than cut all of this out, we've preserved a dermal skin flap, which we're going to attach to the lower pole of our muscle completing what we would call a dual plane pocket. The advantage there 
is that we will be able to maintain good supply from the lower pole, but good support for the lower pole. So Chris is just going to hold the breast out of the way right here. And this will be a running suture. We've already detached right to the corner here. And then what we'll do is we'll get this dermis edge right here to the undersurface of the pectoralis major, including the fascia. So this will complete our lower pole for this prosthesis. And we're going to run this pretty much from the medial edge all the way to the other end. Then we'll check to see that in a sitting position it's accurately placed. We may have too much dermis. We're starting out with eight centimeters, sometimes six is all you need. <coughs> so what we'll do is we'll start with the eight centimeters. Since she wants to go pretty big, I tried to talk her into a C, but she wanted to go double D. We compromised to a D. We picked pretty much an implant that's uh, in the 500 range. And uh, so we're going to need a lot of room in there. And the muscle is definitely not sufficient enough to cover such a pretty decent sized implant. So we're using an, an 8 by 16 centimeter piece of dermal bridge to, to make sure that we have enough coverage there. So this is essentially going to block our implant from dropping down below where we want it to go and also provide good coverage. So this is the leading edge, the bottom end of our muscle, the pec major muscle right here, along with the a little bit of the fascia so it holds well, connected to our the leading edge of our dermal flap. I'm not going too far back on the muscle because some of the perforated going to our pedicle is right under there, so you want to be careful not to knock those off. So and that's going to, this lateral part here is going to be like an underwater bra, providing good lateral support for the implant. We're going to stop right here just so we have enough room to get our implant in and do some interrupted after the implant's in place. Like so. So you can see now we have a nice lower pole pocket which is very secure. Fat usually doesn't hold very well, but dermis and fascia does, so that's why uh, after all these mastectomy research with Alloderm, we've pretty much come up with this concept of using the patient's own dermis rather than cadaver to provide the lower pole. So now Chris is going to put the implant in. We'll need some saline to blow it up. Uh, You could put a, a gel in there, but since she's still going to have quite a bit of tissue, um, there's no need for it. I think the salines are easier to replace. We use gel on the mastectomies and on the very thin augmentations. So we're going to go ahead and inflate that and then check to make sure our lower pocket's adequate. You can see the pedicle is still in good shape, the nipple is nice and wide and it's going to rotate without too much trouble right to where it needs to go. So the only thing left to do is put a few sutures uh, over here so that we get lateral support. So let's start, we're just going to put enough to unravel it and then we'll do the rest after we're done with this closure and also staple it back up. We'll need a stapler as well. So we're going 50 cc's at a time. It's a 475 implant, moderate because we needed the, the width, 15 centimeter width. So as you can see, as Chris pumps the saline and it's starting to unravel and that's what I want to see. I want to make sure that the pocket's in good position, that the lower pole has good support, and that it fills that upper pole up here because that's really the, the area that we're interested in having the implant fill. That's very nice. Very, very nice. So we've got skin flap, 
medial pedicle, dermal, lower pole, and lateral support. We've been very conservative in the amount of lateral dissection of our submuscular pocket so it doesn't migrate. And then we'll just put a few sutures over here to make sure the implant doesn't drop down. We have two for six, so we have 300. We probably stop at 350 right there. So it's unraveling quite nicely. We might have to open the pocket slightly more for now. I want to leave it as it is and we'll staple things up and see if we need to modify it in any way. So this last little bit of dermis that we've preserved is going to continue to connect with the uh, lateral border of our muscle. So Chris is going to put the beaver in there just to protect our implant so that we don't damage it. And here's a lateral border of our muscle. I want to make sure that you grab a decent bite there but that you don't puncture the implant. And um, we'll leave just enough room for that catheter to be able to slip out once we're done with the final volume. So we're going to tie that down. It's the most lateral suture. And you can see that this dermis acts perfectly as a sling to control our lower pole, just as it does on our mastectomy reconstruction. I'm going to do just a couple more right here. Between our dermal flap and the muscle right there with the pec fashion. So what we'll do next is we'll staple the skin flaps back together, tuck our medial pedicle such that the nipple will end up where we want it to be, and um, then increase the volume slightly. So here's a pedicle again, the nipple's contracting, it has good blood supply. We'll staple this up right over here. I'm going to score this just a tiny bit more so it comes together last time. You want to be really precise in your closure here. So you can see we've removed two thirds of our skin so that it's nice and tight and the nice and perfect. So the medial flap ends up right where our breast marrow needs to be. The nipple is going to shift, even though it's way out here, you can tell it's got beautiful blood supply. We've elevated just enough here so that it can rotate over without too much tension. It'll come out just where we want it to be. And then the lateral flaps will come together over here nicely. Like this. We'll close it off in this corner right here. Get this together right here. Nipples right where we want it, which is perfect. Let's close this up right there. flaps closed up and you can get a good idea of what the breast shape is going to be. I think it's slightly bigger than it should. I really try to encourage her to be a C. But let's sit her up so that we can get a nice contrast between what this right breast looks like and what the left looks like. Okay. Are we going to have Yeah. That's all she needs. So, as you saw, we just stapled up these flaps temporarily just to see what the shape would look like. And you can tell this was the original shape right here, with the bulk of the breast tissue being below the fold. So what we preserved was a careful outline of what the skin flap should be after we do all of our work. The next step was to score these upper flaps through dermis and to elevate these flaps 
slightly on the medial end, because that's where all the blood supply comes through, and very aggressively on the lateral touch, all the way to our marks here. The next thing that we did was to score an 8 centimeter dermal pedicle. You can see the marks right here. That's pretty much what we're going to preserve this lower end of dermis here. The next step will be to reduce this breast by keeping the nipple attached to a medial pedicle. So only this lateral and inferior breast gets removed, as we did over here. And then the final step is to do a dual plane submuscular saline augmentation as we would on a mastectomy reconstruction, using the muscle to cover the upper two-thirds, and then this dermal bridge to cover the lower pole and control the bottoming out effect. So this will be very solid. It won't move for the next few years. Unlike uh, a patient that would have had just a simple dual plane without graft, she would have bought in that pretty quickly. So that this will preserve the upper pole fullness and control the tightness of the lower pole since the dermis tends not to stretch out over time. So I think this is pretty adequate volume. We've reduced um, approximately uh, 240 grams of breast and we've augmented with 350 grams of breast. So we have a net 100 gram, uh, 100 cc increase approximately. So she started out as a 38 um, small D. She wanted to go to a double D, so we're compromising and going to a 30, 30, 38D, even though I would prefer this being a little bit smaller. Um, she wants to stay about that size. So we're going to do exactly the same thing on the other side. Then we're going to come back and make an opening here about 38 millimeters and pop out the nipple, which is right behind there, and quite a lot of pop. So that's pretty much our technique for inverted T mastopexy, medial pedicle breast reduction, and a submuscular dual plane augmentation with a dermal sling for the lower pole. All right, so Chris is closing the left side now. She already closed the right side, so what's left to be done is to put up, pull out the nipple areola complex. This point right here was the top of the triangle, which has now been closed off into a vertical line, and that was measured at 21 centimeters from the sternal notch, which is pretty much where the nipple should be. So what we're going to do is take this sizer right here, which is 38 millimeters. We use the 42 millimeter to shrink the areola, and we're using a 38 millimeter to make the cutout because it's, there's a little bit of tension on that skin that will dilate and go slightly bigger once we cut it. So we make a smaller circle to compensate for that. So I've imprinted that 38 millimeter circle. It's a, it's a perfect circle. So there's no guessing as to what pattern to use. And I'm just going to follow it very carefully with this 15 blade right here to make sure that it's a perfect opening. I'm going to go through this epidermis and then leave a little bridge of dermis like we did on the other incisions so that two reasons. One, we have good tissue to close with, but also we don't burn the edge of the skin that's going to remain with the electric ordering. So this is what I'm doing right now. I'm just leaving that little bridge of dermis. The next step will be to score the dermis all around with the cautery. And that's what I'm going to do right now. So the same pattern is going to be used to take out this little bit of core. You have to be careful not to burn the nipple, which is right underneath here. So we're going to go very carefully through fat. So the epidermis is what I removed. The dermis is this white stuff. And then we score it around. And what you're seeing is the subcutaneous fat, this yellow stuff right here. So we're going to core it out. I'm going to put my finger on it and make sure that we don't burn the underlying nipple. and remove this core of tissue so that there's plenty of room for the nipple to come out. You don't want any tension on it, otherwise it'll compromise the blood supply to that nipple. As you recall, that nipple is being carried by a medial pedicle, so the attachment is from the upper inner quadrant. And we have already positioned it so it's right where we want it to be, underneath 
our flat there and it's got excellent blood supply. You can see that it fills right back up when we press on it. And so we're going to suture it down at the 12 and 6 o'clock positions first. The 12 o'clock position will be exactly where the center of the breast was, or the marking right here, the breast meridian. So this is our 12 o'clock right there. And the nipple is rotated clockwise 90 degrees right now because it was down here and now we've rotated it this way so it fits in the proper position. So it shifted from over here, as you recall, where my finger is to, at, to this position, which is 21 centimeters. So I'm taking a bite of the upper flap right there. And then I'm going to take the 12 o'clock position right of the nipple areola complex right here. After we do that, we'll find the exact opposite, which will be the 6 o'clock position, so that we can distribute it evenly around the circle. And there should be very little tension on it. As you can see here, it's just laying there without any pull on it. So there's no chance of the blood supply being clamped off. There's also no tension underneath here. If I put my finger under this flap here, it's pretty comfortable. And we're not depending on these flaps to maintain the shape. We have our internal dermal sling as well as the muscle which is holding the implant at a higher and more medial position so that the skin flaps are really just simply resurfacing the shape of the breast that we've accomplished underneath it. So that's a, 12, that's a 6 o'clock position which is exactly the opposite end of that 12 stitch. And that's going to hook up to our, the top of our vertical incision right here. So this will be the three-way point, the corner between the upper part of our vertical at the medial flap the upper part of our vertical at the lateral flat and a deep dermis part of our nipple areola complex at 6 o'clock. And those three stitches together will bring down nicely that 6 o'clock position at that three-way point. So you want to be as precise as possible so that it lays properly. And once you're done with this second stitch, we're going to put another stitch at the uh, 3 and 9 o'clock position. So I want to make sure that's buried properly. So this is going to come out this way, like so, so that the knot is now buried nicely. So this is the 6 o'clock. And now we're going to find the center between the 12 and 6 o'clock on this side right here, and I'm looking to see, it looks like right about there is where 3 o'clock is on the nipple areola complex. And then we're going to find the 3 o'clock position on our medial flap cutout right there. And once we put that together, it'll start looking like a circle right here. So these are the deep, deep dermal sutures of 3O monochrome the same thing that we've used on the inframammary fold. This darker color stuff is our blue marker from the original flap design. And it basically is designed specifically for surgical purposes, so it's completely absorbable. That ink will disappear. So this is the 9 o'clock position on the flap and the 9 o'clock position on our nipple areola complex. Push all that surrounding fat in there. And now we're getting the appearance of a nice circle. So all we're going to do after this is complete our closure with the deep dermis. One more stitch in between each of these and then we're going to run a more superficial stitch called subcuticular between the epidermis and the dermis and that will be continued down this vertical which is already beautifully closed with that deeper suture. 
so that there's no tension on the incisions at all and they should heal pretty inconspicuously. So right between these two, roughly 430. And 430 on the medial flap side right here, again deep dermis. Now we're going to do in between the 3 and 12 o'clock positions. So the 130 position right here on the nipple areola complex. And 130 at the medial flap right here. The next one between 9 and 12, so 10.30, right here, on the lateral flap now, and 10.30 on the nipple area of the complex, right here. We left a nice dermal bridge when we were shrinking the areola at the very beginning. And that's why we have a nice, decent bite with the suture. And we left the dermal bridge when we're making the core through the upper flap, as you saw. So these stitches can be quite secure. We can take a nice bite of the dermis. Because as, as I said earlier, the fat doesn't hold the sutures very well. Just dermis and fashion. So this is the last one I'm going to put in between the 6 and 9 o'clock position, so 7.30. Bring that back in right there. And we have a new, smaller, and higher position for our nipple areola complex. The final step will be, at this point, to simply run a suture on the outside. And we'll get back to it in a second.